so much for joining me once again here at the Girlfriends Club. I am your host, Memory Bengessa. And once again, today's message is coming from Waiting on God's Promise, a 10-step guide for the Christian for the Christian woman. That's a book I wrote a couple of years ago. Look out, go to www.memorybengessa.com for the release date of that book. I have a chapter dedicated to becoming the ultimate catch for your mate. So oftentimes it's easy to fall into expectations of what we're looking for when it comes to a mate, but it's so easy at the same token to forget and to neglect who we are and what we need to do. What I've come to learn oftentimes, and I thank God for that revelation, is that we got to become the people that we want to attract first. And I want to tell you a testimony of how far that goes out into marriage. I'm going to segue real quick. Into marriage, we're all not perfect. I'm not perfect. My husband's not perfect. But it's also that thing that has taught me from what I'm getting ready to say, where when there's something I feel about my husband, I don't say, God, please fix him. Please make him do this. and Please make him do that. I've come to say, God, fix me. God, what do I need to do to be this wife for him? What do I need to learn from this experience? And inadvertently, some miraculously happens within me and within him. So I want to go back to the message of saying, becoming the catch that you want your mate to be. Because once again, we do live on high expectations and most career-minded women, or even most women out there want that ultimate security from a man. They want that guy with great security, stability, and sensitivity. When reality is, we are, we are what we attract. And I want to encourage you on three things. Be the person you want to attract. If you want to get married to a man of great security, then create yourself to being that great security within yourself. Go back to school if you need to. Enhance your life with certificates, diplomas, degrees, whatever it is, open a business. But create that type of security because that allows you and that opens up doors to bringing you to the platform of such people. Number two, grow your passions. What is it that you love to do like you, well, what you like to do? You do not have to wait to get married to pursue your passions. I found out the best way of pursuing your passions is when you're single and unmarried. And I praise God for always having this laid out for me, even though I didn't really have a clue. Because as an unmarried woman, all I did was write, 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 write. And in my married life now, I write less than I did when I was unmarried. But I will say I thank God because at that point in time I didn't know what he was doing because now I write less, I have a lot of material. So it's a win-win situation. Start working on whatever it is that you need to work on right now as an unmarried person. Number three, live on purpose and enjoy your life. Live on purpose goes part and parcel with um, enjoying your passions. Live on purpose, be in purpose. Sometimes not everyone has something they're passionate about, and that's okay. But as a Christian, your first purpose is to love God and glorify God. What can you do with church? How can you help the Lord out? How can you be of help? Be hands-on and enjoy your life. Don't wait. I think I said this on another video, but I like to just go there with that. Do not wait till you get married to fulfill whatever it is. If you need to go to Italy today, go. If you need to go to the Bahamas, go. Get some girlfriends, get your mother, get your auntie, get your cousins, get your kids, and go. Live life, enjoy life, because once God blesses you, if marriage is what God has for your destiny, then it's a whole different paradigm. I love you guys that much. Be blessed. If you have any questions, memory at memorybengessa.com.